greetings. Got a blurb video for you here about this thing. It's an optical laser mouse by Hybon. Optical fiber engine inside. 450 DPI plug and play, Windows 95. And look at all of this copy down at the bottom. Uh, like Dragonfly's Eye. Among a number of other things. And the birds are really chirpy out there today. Hmm. Anyway, this is a recent donation to LGR and I didn't know what to uh, make of it, honestly. Because it's an optical laser mouse, but this predates that. I mean, I don't know when it's made. There's no date on here anywhere. There's actually just not much information on this period. It looks extremely sketchy and weird. I imagine that it has to be an optical mouse, like your standard sensor under there. They just called it laser because it sounded cool. And the other thing is it's serial. This is a serial mouse, nine pin serial connector. Yeah, I don't have many optical mouse input devices that are serial, that are just serial on their own. Most of the ones that I have, they have like special mouse pads and uh, like require an external power supply. In fact, I think I did an Oddware video on one years and years ago, like a decade ago. Those required some extra special things. I don't, I don't think this does. I mean, it's kind of hefty. Maybe there is a special mouse pad in there, but I don't know. And the fact that it mentions Windows 95 at least implies that it's been, you know, from 1990, late 94, 95 onward, but don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know what to expect here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to open this thing up and see what it's like because uh, it's just a funky thing. And that's why I accepted the donation because I just don't know what to expect. So let's check it out. Either way, having an older mouse that is uh, optical is just kind of cool even if it's just that, but the fact that I also just don't know what entirely to expect in here and how they pulled it off. Yeah, this should be a fun blurb. Made in Korea. I'm trying not to cut myself on this cardboard. It is extremely sharp, feels like razor blade. Oh, okay. Oh, there's the special pad. Well, that answers that question, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. Mystery solved, then. It's pretty much like the others that I have. The question is, does it need a power supply? Huh. Guess not. Look at this. So it is just standard nine pin serial. This feels like um, some of the mice that came with like compact presarios back in the mid nineties. There's a button on the side and look at that. So you got the two sensors, one for each direction. That's Again, pretty standard for these kind of things. Very light. I like extremely light. <laughs> Measure it really quick over here. Let's see, what do we got? That is, wow, the sun went away. 116 grams or about four ounces, goodness. So that's uh, at least a few ounces less than a comparable mouse from the era. Most of them anyway. That's a very small little pad too. I guess they were relying on that higher DPI, so. <laughs> this, is, this is cool. I got a disc, joystick, plus joystick, laser mouse. What's the plus? Was there mention of the, yeah, okay, there was, there was. Press the side and right hand buttons, switches to joystick mode, which is convenient to enjoy virtual reality or shooting games. Sketch mode. Press the side and left hand button enables sketch mode. What in the world, man? If anybody knows if this was sold as something else, this seems like a pretty awesome product, honestly but like the packaging and everything else is just 
it looks like a weird off-brand thing. And I mean, it kind of is high bond. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm just not familiar with this era <laughs> enough to know whether or not this was common. I've just, I've never seen another mouse product that's exactly like this. I'm, I'm digging the multiple nodes, man. That's pretty awesome. Let's see. Model LMOX-2 for general users with joystick mode. Microsoft mouse compatible, so that's good. I'm assuming it's just going to do everything through the mouse itself and it doesn't need special software if it's MS mouse compatible. So we might just be able to use cute mouse or mouse.com. <laughs> I'm intrigued, man. I am intrigued. Assuming that it's as simple as it looks, I'll plug this into an IBM compatible and try it out with some software. Look at this thing. Isn't that neat? I sure think so. All right. Got it installed here on this lovely machine. This is a Zenith Data Systems 286, 12 megahertz version. And yeah, I went ahead and got the software installed, which is pretty much what I expected. It's just Microsoft compatible serial mouse drivers. Copyright 1996, although it's version 3.8, so I still don't know when exactly this first came out, but you know, this version is 1996. And just perusing the manual here to make sure I know how to do the different mouse modes. Because, yeah, that's kind of the most interesting thing. And along with the drivers that it loaded up, amusingly, it also put Ken's Labyrinth in this laser directory here. So, yeah, it, it came with Ken's Labyrinth, a shareware version of that from Epic Mega Games that you can try out with the joystick mode. This is a 286, though, so that's not going to run well. But, I mean, we'll try it anyway, I suppose. For now, though, let's just try it out in Windows. And by that, I mean Windows 2.03 from 1987. That's what came with this computer when I got it. And yeah, it works. I mean, as expected. Uh, it's very nice and responsive. DPI feels great. Lots of smooth movement going on. In fact, uh, let me move the camera a little bit. I think being able to see what's on screen is a little more important than seeing the whole scene here. But anyway, yeah, it's a mouse. It moves like a mouse. That's great. And so at the moment, it's just in normal mouse mode, I believe. So you hold down all three buttons to put it in that mode. Yeah, that's what this is. So just moving it about a couple inches either direction will move it to each corner of the screen, which is great because it's a tiny little pad that it's relying on there with that pattern on it. And uh, those optical sensors are just looking in the XY directions. And that's how it does that. Go and open up paintbrush here, and this is just PC paintbrush. And we can test it out with some drawing. Again, accuracy on this is quite nice. You can tell there's that grid going on because I don't know, it just it feels like it's on a grid. <laughs> uh, let's change the mode though. Let's change it over to sketch mode, which is holding down the left and side button for a second. And there we go. Now it is way less sensitive, more precise. So uh, it seems that they mean this to be for drawing and such. Um, but yeah, this is definitely more my jam here, this, this sensitivity setting or DPI setting, I guess. And then the final mode is joystick mode, which is holding down the side and right buttons. Well, it didn't do it. Let's try that again. Oh, yep, yeah, there it is. I'm not touching the mouse. It's just doing that on its own. So you just sort of move it in a direction, and it keeps going in that direction. <laughs> and that's the joystick mode. It just gives it this momentum. I'm not touching the mouse. I just sort of nudge it this way, nudge it that way, nudge it that way. And the more you use it from where the... the 
the more that you move it away from the center, it kind of emulates the feel of a joystick in terms of it just, yeah, doing that. I don't know, man. It's a thing. They tried. I guess it's maybe useful for flight sims. All right, so let's try out Ken's Labyrinth just to see what it even runs like on a 12 megahertz 286. I can't imagine it's going to be great. I have it just set to the regular low default settings, so no sound, just PC speaker. Thanks, Ken. Quiet little PC speaker digitized audio there. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, it works. It's just the frame rate is so low that it's kind of hard to tell how smooth the mouse is in gaming, but honestly, I, I eh, figure it's actually pretty good, you know, considering how accurate and usable it was in Windows. And this is just on the regular mouse mode here, so if I switch back over to that weird analogy joystick thing. <laughs> it just, I barely move. I, my hand is completely off the mouse and it's just moving around. Ah, uh, yeah, not a fan of playing these kind of games with a real joystick, much less an optical mouse on a weird grid pad emulating a joystick. Anyway, whatever, this game doesn't run well enough to really show off anything. So let us try uh, something else in DOS. See what I have on here. Got Commander Keen. Leisure Suit Larry, Zelliard, Revenge of Do. Actually, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Uh -oh. Well, guess I don't have mouse support somehow. Well, dang it. This would be a good test if it worked. So installer is just the installer. And that just... <laughs> Weird. Why would you not have... You have mouse support on regular Arkanoid. Who knows, man. All right, we'll see what SimCity does, because I don't think anything else on here really supports a mouse that we can run. I, I don't know. Maybe, but... Uh, Sim City. <laughs> Not that it's a big deal, this is just gonna play normally. But still, I wanna test it with a game that's not Ken's Labyrinth running all choppily. Do I not have anything saved on here? Okay. Ah, yes, render that map in real time. <laughs> Still a lot better than 8088. All right. Oh, yeah, this is uh, cool. Donk. Let's see, which mode do I have this on? I think I'm in sketch mode. Let's put it over to joystick. Just because. Oh yeah, that's so weird. I could, yeah, I mean, I could see this working pretty decently well for something like a flight sim, but even then, it's like, it's so strange because there's no dead zone, just the center of wherever you start it. Like, as soon as you switch over into joystick mode, that part of the mouse pad is now the center. Or if I pick it up and then just drop it down somewhere else, now that's the center. And you're just sort of moving the mouse left, right, up and down, around a fictitious center of the joystick. Ooh. It is a weird disconnected feeling. Truly. Uh, but yeah, in the mouse mode and the sketch mode, it's pretty awesome. Let's put it back into sketch Ah, there we go. Man, that is so much better. That up and down sensitivity is getting me, though. I wish there was a way to uniquely change 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's so irritating. Because up and down is just way more sensitive than uh, uh, otherwise. Horizontal. Well, that's the word. Yeah, parks next to industrial. That makes sense. Why am I doing that? Honestly, though, some of that is probably to do with just the way that this is kind of stretched as well in terms of the video image. Because, yeah, you get this kind of weird disconnect between the vertical and horizontal of a mouse moving differently like this on all kinds of different programs now that I think about it. So, yeah, some of that's probably just the display type being used. Anyway, mouse works very well. Uh, this is not garbage whatsoever. In fact, this is a pretty good little mouse. I like it. I'm going to keep using it on, on different systems. Only downside, of course, is the fact that it needs the grid down beneath it to, to do anything. Because, yeah, if uh, you use it just on the tabletop or the desktop here, it's not going to do anything. Because it doesn't see anything beneath it and the sensors don't know what to look at. But that's it. That is the uh, the laser optical, whatever the heck, this thing, optical fiber engine mouse <laughs> from sometime in the mid-90s. Thanks for watching.